Today I'm going to talk to you guys about what we call the demand function. When we look at things this way in economics, we're just trying to see the concept in a different way. We're trying to use kind of our mathematical skills to see the same concept to, uh, to explain why buyers do what buyers do. So keep that in mind as we go through this, because some of it is just seeing the same thing in a different way. For example, we can see the law of demand if we look at the demand function itself. The demand function is QD equals A minus BP. Well, let's get rid of A and B for a second. And what we're saying is that quantity demanded has some relationship to price. Okay. Well, we said before that the law of demand means that when price goes up, quantity demanded goes down and vice versa. So they have an inverse or a negative relationship. That negative relationship is why we have a minus sign right there. So the demand function, quantity demanded equals A minus BP, has four parts to it. Price and quantity demanded you already know about. With those, um, that's most often what you're going to be solving for. The two other variables are called the A variable and the B variable. Let's talk about the A variable first. The A variable is where the demand curve intersects or intercepts the Q axis. We can see right here that it, inter it intercepts it at 20. So this would be an X intercept if you want to see it that way. Um, we also, we have a name for it. It's called the autonomous level of demand. And what that means, it's the maximum amount demanded even if the price is zero. Remember when we talk about demand, there's two concepts. There's buyer desire and buyer ability. Well, if there's no price for a product, buyer ability, for the most part, is limitless. I can buy as many of those as I want if the price is zero. However, my buyer, my, though my buyer ability does, uh, it is infinite, my buyer desire is not. This is something we call the law of diminishing marginal utility. We'll talk about it more later on, but it's basically this idea that I don't really want limitless amounts of anything. Um, we, in class, we talked about pizza. Pizza's good, I love it, but I wouldn't want to have pizza every meal every day. I'd probably be excited for the first meal and a little less excited for the next meal, and pretty quickly after that, I'd start looking for something different than pizza. So there is a maximum amount demanded for every product. We don't necessarily know what that is, nor do we care. What matters is it is out there somewhere. Well, again, we call it the A variable, and that's what we're going to represent there. Next, we have to understand in the formula, so we're saying quantity demanded is equal to a maximum amount minus something to do with price. Well, remember we said that when price goes up, quantity demanded declines. So. B is going to tell us how much, for every one change in price, how much we lose of quantity demanded. So that's what I'm getting at here, that as price increases fewer than this amount, the A variable, fewer than the maximum amount, will be demanded. Some of you are probably pretty good at math, and you've probably noticed something already, that Q is on the x-axis and P is on the y-axis. And what that means in our formula is we actually have quantity demanded as our dependent variable. And I know in math you're used to those being switched. That's okay, it's just a different way of looking at the same type of math. There's not necessarily a right or a wrong way to do it. This is, however, different than what you may have seen before. Still, this is a linear function and it's going to produce a straight line like what we have here. So. If we start at 20, whatever B is, however much for every one change in price, however many quantity demanded we lose, that's going to be the slope of this line, the slope of the function. Well, because we've switched those, like I said, even though you're used to it being rise over run, in this case, it's going to be run over rise. And in this case, because it's always going to be for every positive rise, it's going to be a negative run we say it's a negative run over rise. So let's go ahead and figure out 
what this demand function or what, what the demand function for this line will be. There's one last thing we need to know to do that, and that's where is the P intercept? Where does this line intercept the P um, axis? Well, conceptually what we're saying is that if I raise price, and every time I raise price, I lose some of this finite number, eventually I'll raise price so high that none of those, uh, none of those people uh, want to buy it anymore. Well, again, conceptually, that's the idea of the P-intercept. We don't have a different name for it. You don't see it in the formula here, um, but it is, a for of course, there. Let's solve for uh, the A variable first. Now, again, this is really easy because we can see that it's 20. We can see it right there, but let's solve for it anyway just so we can figure it out. What we know about the A variable is that it's some positive quantity, but we don't know what, with a price of zero. If we know that, we can figure it out pretty easily. So in this case, we know that the quantity demanded is 20, so it's gonna be quantity demanded of 20 is equal to the A variable, which we don't know, minus the B variable, which we don't know, times zero. Because again, wherever this point is, price is zero. Well, now we can see that's pretty easy. 20 then is equal to A minus anything times zero is zero. So 20 is equal to A, or the A variable is 20. So let's go ahead and write that in. So now we know that QD is equal to 20 minus BP. Next thing we have to figure out, and again, you couldn't do this without the curve being there. I'm, obviously, I'm relying on it. If there was no line and this, well, anything could be right. Now, it's the negative run over the rise. And again, the negative is the same negative we see there. There are two. So the run, we know is 20. 20 to 0, so minus 20. And then the rise is 0 to 10. So positive 10. So this, so the function for this line that we see here is QD is equal to 20 minus 20 over 10 is 2 times P. In doing that, we can find, we can find the quantity demanded for every price that lies along this line. So let's do an example of that real quickly. Let's take the price of 5. And we can see here that if the price is 5, by the way, since this is a paper 3 topic, uh, this is one of those things you're meant to be very exact about. So do use a ruler, do measure things out. Typically, you're going to use graph paper as you do this. And then it's going to be straight down to 10. I can see I've been a little bit inaccurate there, which is why you should use graph paper. So what we're saying is if you take this line straight over and down, we get to an answer of 10. So when price is 5, quantity demanded will be 10. Well, we should see that here if we plug either of those numbers into the formula, or I suppose both. So quantity demanded of 10 is equal to 20 minus 2 times 5. And yes, 10 is equal to 20 minus 10. There we go, it worked. If we didn't know one of those, we could of course solve for it. So I could say, if I put the price at 4, and again, this is me looking into my crystal ball, if I make price 4, what will quantity demanded be? I should see, if I take this over from 4, we should see that this point comes straight down to the 12. I could also ask, well, what if I want to sell? Maybe I'm a supplier and I'm getting to look at this. What if I want to sell 16 of these? What should the price be?
and we see that price has to be equal to 2. So to come back and reinvestigate our formula, we're saying that 20 is the maximum amount that will ever be demanded of this product. It's the A variable. From there, if I raise price by one, I'm gonna go over by minus two. If I raise price by another, over by minus two, in the same fashion until we get to price of 10, quantity demanded of zero. 